Now let's find out how to implement a shift register in LabVIEW. Recall that the basic shift register, I'll draw a 4-bit version here, has all of the flip-flops connected to a common clock signal, and then the Q output of one flip-flop feeds the D input of the next flip-flop. and the leftmost flip-flop needs to get fed with some kind of value. We'll come back to that one a little bit. Now imagine that the stored bit pattern looked like this, 1011. Now we know that the one here appears on the Q output, zero is on its Q output and so forth. Now when we apply one edge of our common clock signal to all flip-flops, we see that this flip-flop samples a 1, so this changes to 1. This flip-flop sees a 0, and this flip-flop sees another 1. What, what do we get back here? Well, whatever we feed in, and this is commonly referred to as the serial data input on this side. And whatever value we apply here, I'll just generically refer to this as S. That gets transferred into this leftmost flip-flop. Now if we examine what's happened to the bit pattern, we see that all of the bits have traveled one position to the right. So this particular shift register then is a form of a right shift register. Now we can look at several different LabVIEW implementations. The first one is based on a, a series of discrete LabVIEW shift registers. And I'm showing an 8-bit version of the shift register here. On the left side then we see the most significant bit up here, designated as Q7. LSB of course is on the other, other end, Q0. In the 4-bit version, this would be Q3, and the least significant bit is Q0. So all the Q values are available on the right side, excuse me, the left side of the while loop. Now we see that the Q value is then transferred to the D input effectively of the next shift register. Again, I'm using the term shift register to designate what, what LabVIEW calls the shift register structure here. We like, like to think of these as being discrete flip-flops. Now the equivalent version based on feedback nodes looks like this. And again, this is the 8-bit style here. So we have the leftmost flip-flop and it feeds the D input effectively of the next flip-flop. And so we see that the version based on feedback nodes looks exactly like the schematic version with the traditional flip-flop symbol. All right, one additional implementation I'd like to show you. This one is based on a single LabVIEW shift register structure. And if you right click on that structure after you've placed it and say add element seven more times, that adds all of these additional terminals. The additional terminals keep track of values that occurred not only in the previous iteration, but on even more previous iterations. All right, so we see that there are no terminals on the right side Again, indicating that we only have a single LabVIEW shift register structure, but with multiple terminals exposed.